Oof, that looks complicated. OK, a quick primer. So for a rate equation, the rate is the rate constant multiplied by the concentration of the reactant, and let's say raised to the power 2 in our example. So if I double the concentration of the reactant, then the rate is going to go up by double squared, which in this case is a factor of 4. And notice the rate constant doesn't change if you change the concentration of the reactants. But the rate constant will change if you change temperature or add a catalyst. And the effect of those two things on the rate constant can be calculated using this Arrhenius equation. And that's not straightforward. Look how deeply the temperature in Kelvin is buried into that natural log, as is the catalyst, which will change the activation energy. Continuing our primer, this is a Boltzmann distribution at two different temperatures, hot and cold, and that white line there is the activation energy. So shaded in, in grey are the molecules that have enough energy to react. But if I increase the temperature, notice that there are now more molecules with enough energy to react. So adding temperature makes more molecules have enough energy to react. And you can think about that as the rate constant in the cold reaction is going to be smaller than the rate constant in the hot reaction. That makes sense, doesn't it? Cold one goes slower. So let's look at a typical question. At 27 degrees C, the above reaction has a rate of 0 0.01. At what temperature would the reaction be twice as fast? Assume A, and concentration is unchanged. Well, I see two temperatures there. I also see two rate constants and an activation energy. Ah, so that complicated equation at the beginning is what we need. Now, how do I know it's a first order reaction? Because the units are per second, so it must be a first order reaction. And so that somehow the rate is twice as fast. Now, I could double the concentration of reactants to get the double the rate, but it says the concentration of reactants is unchanged. So the only way to double the rate, therefore, is to double k, the rate constant. And so that's what's happening. k1, the initial rate constant, is 0 0.01. But k2, the second rate constant, at the different temperature, is going to be double that. And I'm sure that's going to be the case for all the IB examples. T1, the temperature at the beginning, 27. No, 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 you've got to convert that to Kelvin. We'll do that in a little bit. All right, so let's put down the data that we do know. And write out the equation. Now, this is given in the data book. You don't need to memorize it. OK, now, R, the gas constant, is 8.31, given in the data booklet. But look at the units there. They don't agree with the activation energy, joules to kilojoules. So we're going to have to fix that. The temperature's in Kelvin. And per mole, per mole. OK, that looks good. So it's just the joules that are going to cause us trouble. So putting the numbers in. The activation energy is 50,000, because I converted to joules. Carrying on the working, 0 0.693 is 6,017. And notice I'm trying to keep at least three sig figs because the question has two sig figs in it. So I can round at the end. And finally, I get a value of T2 is 311 Kelvin, which really should be 310 Kelvin to two sig figs. OK, that makes sense. It's higher than the initial temperature for a faster reaction. So that looks good. OK, another question. This has an evil little trick in it. So what is the new rate constant? Well, I have two temperatures, two rate constants, and an activation energy. So that's the equation we were looking at. And if it's a higher temperature, I'm expecting my answer to be above 0.5. Higher temperature, faster reaction, higher rate constant. So that's a little check we can do at the end. 
All right, putting in the numbers as I see them. Don't fall for the jewels, killer jewels trick there. And don't forget to convert to Kelvin for the temperatures. See the trick? How on earth can I get that K2 out of that natural log? Ugh. Okay, so there's a simple manipulation that you can do. Natural log of the top number minus the natural log of the bottom number. There we are. I've extricated that K2. Again, at least three sig figs all the way through so I can round to two at the end. and pushing the numbers all the way through, cancelling out those two negatives, here and there. Oh, now how do I get the K2 out of the long K2? Well, it's really E to the 0 0.901, and so to get that, it's, it's inverse long, to extricate that K2 from the long there. And that gives me 2.46, and the units are gonna be the same, per seconds. Yeah, and that seems right. Hotter temperature, higher rate constant, but not crazy higher. And for the final question, have a little go yourself. The answer is at 40.2 kilojoules per mole. See if you get that. And we are done.